Of course, that's former White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator Dr. Deborah Birx. Saw a lot of her. All that nonsense about her scarves when this country was in crisis shows you what we really try to focus on sometimes, right? Her name was in the news almost as much as Fauci. So, now that she's out, what does she know and what can she discuss about long COVID? These comparisons being made to HIV, if you look up Burks's background, she's done a lot of research in the area of HIV AIDS and what that means. Let's bring her in now. Senior fellow at the Bush Institute, adjunct professor at Texas Tech Health Sciences Center. That's just my tongue. It's not my long COVID. Doc, good to see you again. Good to see you, Chris. So uh, first up, long COVID. OK, I want to talk to you about that. But the idea that the CDC wasn't getting things right on your watch and you're worried about what they're doing now means what? Give some context to that headline. Well, it's really important that we understand what went wrong in that first entire year. And I think the number one thing was they weren't willing to really understand that COVID was a very different virus than flu. And you can't use 19th century symptomatic tracking of viruses when we have 21st century technology. And so we were late to testing, where we were late to really talking about asymptomatic spread, and we were very late in recognizing the aerosol nature of this virus, which still lives with us today. And that's why it still spreads so easily indoor, because it remains suspended. It was never flu. It will never be flu. So this leads people to say it was intentional, uh, that this was the government wanting the sickness to spread. Um, the vaccine was forced on us because it was good for big pharma. What do you make of those notions? Well, I was there and none of that happened. So I just want to make it clear on, um, no, the virus was not intentional. We, we, you could say we intentionally ignored it because we didn't act fast enough and we didn't test fast enough. I mean, we allowed all of the people to come in from all over the world just tracing symptoms. They clearly had asymptomatic disease mm -hmm. and were spreading virus. And now we know. So what are we doing now as solutions to fix the big gaps that we found in our response? And, and I fear we still haven't taken respiratory diseases and RNA viruses seriously enough as a country. Long COVID, your level of concern, your assessment of the notion that it's vaccine caused, and what you make of comparisons of long COVID to HIV AIDS that are now in the news. Great question, Chris. First, long COVID predates any of our COVID vaccines. Um, and this is one of the key areas that separates this virus from what we've known about other viruses. And I want to really emphasize to you and the public, we only have experience for, with this virus of four years, and we're learning something different every single month about what this virus is capable of doing, from what it's capable to do neurologically and neurologically in the long term, what it's capable to do to our mitochondria, and that's this muscle problem that we're seeing, what it's capable of doing with microclots. I mean, we're to pretend that we know everything that this virus is doing and to be cavalier about getting repetitive COVID infections is a really a huge mistake. I, I am careful. I've had it once. Um, my 95-year-old mother's not had it at all because she's in a particularly vulnerable age group. There's a way to protect people with common sense strategies. Comparisons to HIV, you've done a ton of research in this. Uh, do you believe this is a false flag? Is there something that contextually uh, people need to understand about that comparison? Or is this much darker a potential reality than we knew? The reason the comparison to HIV is important is because HIV was also asymptomatic. I mean, you couldn't see the virus through symptoms because people were infected for seven, eight, nine years before they developed symptoms. But HIV quietly destroyed our immune system. And we learned a lot about immunology from HIV, and it's changed completely our cancer therapy. 
We're learning now about mitochondria and viral impact and brain fog and this, the changes in our neurons and the, the cells that nourish our neurons that really allow us to think and move. And we're learning that because what of the long COVID has done. And so there's two sides of this coin every time. There's a lot of destruction that mild and moderate COVID can do that is on scene, just like HIV was destroying our immune system. But what came out of that is brilliant science that changed how we treated HIV. And if you're diagnosed today, you can live a, a very normal lifespan and people not only survive, but thrive. We need to get to the place where people with long COVID, we've done the research so that people with long COVID can not only survive, but thrive. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.